Richard Childress Racing is coming off of one of its best seasons in years. I think they got a lot going for them. So let's talk about it. In the past decade, Richard Childress Racing wasn't really the team that you would expect to just show up and win based off of pure speed. However, they kind of have been the kings of alternative strategy. Almost all their wins over the past five, six, seven years, except for like Austin Dillon's Daytona 500 victory, has been because they've done something aggressive in the pits, something aggressive with strategy. And there's a very good reason for this. RCR has been leading the field using machine learning to make the best calls possible during a race. There are artificial intelligence able to look at the lap times of every car on track, when they last pitted, their fuel mileage, their tire fall off, basically everything that it needs to know to make the best calls possible for the RCR cars. And this has been expanding to some of the other Chevrolet teams as well. But that alone is not why I see Richard Childress Racing becoming competitive over the next few years. I think there's two other major factors that people have to consider here. For a really long time, Chevrolet teams have had the options to source engines from ECR engines or Hendrick Motorsports. ECR is like the engine shop of RCR. And as you can imagine, it doesn't really create the best competition when you have two Chevrolet teams kind of working against each other. And apparently it got so bad that GM had to step in and say, you guys need to start sharing your data and intellectual property with each other so you can win more races. News of this broke in early October, 2020. And by the time we got to the championship race in November, elements of this partnership were already in Chase Elliott's championship winning race car. So for RCR, I see this being a larger benefit to them than what I would see it being to like Hendrick Motorsports, for example, because they're not typically a team that's showing up with top five race cars, but also they're not that far off on speed. So knowing that their race cars have the best possible engines that they can put in them, this might shed a little bit more light on things like mechanical grip and other areas that they need to work on finding some speed. That brings me to the next major factor that I think could really benefit RCR this next year. This is the last year of the Gen 6 program. A lot of teams are gonna be having to decide, how much effort do we put into our Gen 6 program knowing it's not gonna be around next year? Well, I think RCR still has an incentive to keep working on their Gen 6 program. There are things from that program that they can still use to make their Xfinity cars more competitive. And in addition to that, from a competition standpoint, I think the next gen car is going to benefit teams like RCR more so than it's gonna benefit teams like Hendrick Motorsports. And I'm not suggesting that other teams are gonna completely cut off their gen six program, but if RCR can navigate this better than some of the other teams, it can really play to their advantage. I think both of those things are gonna be great for RCR this next year, and I'm really excited to see if they can really capitalize on them. And I like their driver lineup too. Austin Dillon, to me, has kind of proven that he deserves to be in that race car. People really like to give him a hard time, but I think it's a little bit unwarranted if we're being completely honest. When his team puts him in a position to win a race, he can typically go out and win that race. When they make aggressive strategy calls, he knows how to capitalize on it. When they give him a fast race car, he typically runs really well. And if RCR is able to show up with faster cars every week, it would not be crazy to think he might be able to go out and win multiple races next year. Obviously, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but I think he deserves more credit than what he gets. And then Tyler Reddick had a great rookie season in my mind. I think that guy shows a lot of raw talent. I think he's a great fit at RCR in the eight car. And if he can keep building on some of the success that he's been having, I don't think it's crazy to think that he can't go out and win a few races. And I think Richard Childress has been happy with how he's performing. So I think we're gonna see him around for a little bit. So to me, I think things are looking really good for Richard Childress Racing going into 2021. I think they are in a better position to win races than they've been in in a long time. So this might be a bold prediction and hopefully I'm not wrong, but I think Richard Childress Racing is going to be competitive in the Cup Series again. And I think 2021 just might be the year where we start to see that. But let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos and you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Links for those in the description below. But until next time, my name's Tyler, this is Titan Lusoff, and I'll see you later.